Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. Please like, subscribe and... Uh, <laughs> sorry, I was just reading something this week about the phenomenon of the YouTube voice and apparently this is a thing that the most successful YouTubers all start their videos with a hey guys and they speak in this kind of exaggerated way so I thought I'd give it a try. Maybe that's the way to get mega views on my channel but uh, it doesn't feel quite right. It's not really me so uh, uh, let me start this video again. In this video I'm going to be talking about the song These Days. Now this is a Jackson Brown song but the version that I'm going to be discussing in this video you can hear on the Nico record Chelsea Girl. Uh, it's a fabulous song and this is a really great fingerstyle arrangement of the tune. I think if you're getting into fingerstyle guitar this would be an excellent song to learn. It works equally well on electric or acoustic guitar. Let me begin by playing a bit of it for you and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> So yeah, as I said, this is a Jackson Brown song and apparently he wrote it when he was 16 and uh, wow, he was a precocious young man when he listened to the maturity of the lyrics and the music. And in fact, a lot of Jackson Brown's early success was as a songwriter. He wrote a lot of songs for other people and uh, only later did he come into his own as a singer-songwriter in the 70s. And I think at this kind of time, this was recorded in 1966, I think, or 67. He was in New York. I think he had a relationship with Nico and he contributed several songs to this album, Chelsea Girl. Uh, I do have it on CD. I do still occasionally listen to, uh, to CDs. And it's a great record. It's a kind of interesting combination of several Jackson Brown tracks. There are tracks written by Lou Reed and John Cale. And I think there's a, a Bob Dylan, a Tim Harding song on there as well. So highly recommended album. A good way into Nico. I, I like all of Nico's records. The ones after this are slightly more weird and experimental but this is a, a nice kind of melodious poppy one and uh, I know Nico's voice is a bit of an acquired taste for some people but I, I love it. And then Jackson Brown himself recorded the song on this album For Every Man which I think is one of my favourite Jackson Brown records if you're into that kind of laid back Laurel Canyon kind of west coast sound it's a really strong album and the version of the song on that record is slightly different from the Nico recording. It's in the same key, but it's more strummy and there are some slightly different chord changes. And interestingly, you can see on YouTube that in more recent years, Jackson Brown has reverted to more of a fingerstyle approach when he plays this song live. And that's much closer to what he's doing on the Nico recording. And just to be clear, I think it is Jackson Brown playing guitar on the Nico recording. There's no real credits on this CD, but looking online, it does appear that Jackson Brown played the guitar on the tracks that he wrote. Another association I have with this track is with the film, The Royal Tenenbaums, if any of you know that film. It's a Wes Anderson film. And I think it's got a couple of Nico tracks on the soundtrack. And they seem to be associated with the character Margot Tenenbaum, who's got a bit of a Nico thing going on. I don't know if her character was in part inspired by Nico. And if you've not seen it, it's an excellent film. And like many Wes Anderson films, it's got an excellent soundtrack as well. Let's get into the details of how this is played then. I've got a capo on at the fifth fret. That puts you in the key of the Nico recording. And it's also the same key that Jackson Brown sings it in on the For Every Man record. Uh, actually, in later performances, I've seen Jackson Brown, he's change the key slightly he's got the capo a bit further down the neck and it's really up to you where you put that capo if you're singing along it's all about what works best for your voice so you can experiment with that but today I've got it at the fifth fret just so it matches that original recording and I'm going to be talking about this song in the key of C it just follows very familiar open position chord shapes so of course with the capo on it's technically in the key of F and most of it is based on quite familiar folk finger style patterns. If you've not played any finger style before then I will point you in the direction of my essential finger style patterns video 
and this takes you through all of the most common finger style patterns and I say in that video that learn a few of these patterns and you'll find that they crop up again and again in song after song and it's certainly true in the case of this song I think all of the patterns in this song I do discuss in that video so check that out if you want to just get your finger style technique up to speed before tackling this song. Let's kick off with the introduction which sounds like this. <laughs> beautiful series of descending chords and the basic chords are these we've got C and then the bass line is really just going down we've got this shape here so just the second fret on the fifth string and we've got the first fret on the second string still held down uh, I'm not sure exactly what you'd call that chord it's kind of a G over B except we've got a we've got a C in there as well so um, what is that a G G add 11 with a B in the bass maybe I'm sure someone will put me right if that is wrong but it's it's that shape it's a very familiar guitar shape and from there we're going to A minor or an A minor 7 and then we're just changing the bass to the third fret on the low E string so that's a C with a G in the bass and that's taking us to an F chord so so that's one way of doing it I think the exact voicings on this particular recording are slightly different. We've got C and then this shape here. I think rather than an A minor 7 it's a full A minor chord and then we're changing the bass note and we're also lifting up the second finger as well so you've got this kind of sound here. So third fret on the low E string and then open fourth and third strings and then the first fret on the second string. So it's not quite that C over G sound because you, you haven't got this note in here, you've got an open fourth string instead and then going to the F and you will have to use this thumb over the top F in this particular song like you do with a lot of finger style stuff. You can't really get away with the standard bar chord here because we want that open top string to be available to us to give us that major 7 sound. Now as far as the finger style pattern goes on this we've got an alternating thumb and it's mostly going between the fifth and the fourth strings except on this chord here and on the F we're going from the sixth to the fourth strings and I think the best starting point with the actual finger style pattern would be to go thumb finger thumb finger so I've got thumb index finger thumb middle finger just for those first few chords so that will give you something that sounds good I think again the precise pattern that I'm hearing on the recording is just slightly different to that we've got so it's starting with a pinch and then we've got a little hammer on into that second shape so hammering from the open fifth string to the second fret and we've got this slightly tricky thing here where as you're hammering down you're also playing another note so so there as that finger comes down I'm playing the second string at the same time and then we get to the F chord and the pattern changes slightly and most of the time it's like that there are of course some variations throughout this tune so you don't have to be too slavish in copying exactly what I'm doing here but mostly the pattern on the F is this so we've got some pinches there so I'll pinch on beat 2 fourth and second strings also a pinch there on the outside two strings that's giving you that F major 7 sound repeating that sequence of chords a couple of times then we're just hanging on that F chord a little bit longer and then 
we're going to the C chord. And this is exactly one of those patterns that I talked about in that previous video. Here we've got the Travis picking kind of bass. And we've got a nice melody on top. Often when I'm playing fingerstyle, I'll have my thumb playing the lower three strings, and then I've got a finger allocated to each of the higher strings. So often it will be my index finger playing on the third string, middle finger on the second, and ring finger on the top string. Not always, I sometimes cheat, but that as a general system seems to work quite well. So the entire introduction goes like this quite slowly. I will try and play it exactly like the record, but of course I can't guarantee it. to the first verse of the song and that's the same as the introduction so the same descending chords repeat that and then we're going to E minor for the these days that bit there so it's just a straight E minor chord alternating bass Kind of pattern in my tab I will try and write out all of the little details and little variations but mostly it's this kind of pattern all of the verse quite slowly then section of the tune call it a chorus if you want I'm not sure it's exactly a chorus but that starts with the F chord and that's pretty much the same pattern as we had in the introduction with those pinches in there then we've got a little pause we're going to see major 7 chord. This is different from the Jackson Brown recording of the tune. Just got this nice C major 7 which is just allowed to ring and I'm playing it like this. I've got the third fret on the lowest two strings, second fret on the fourth string and open three top strings. So it's like a C major 7 over G with the fifth in the bass. Just strumming that twice then got this little part here so second to third frets on the low string and I'm hammering down at the second fret on the fourth string and I'm doing this little brush thing with my first finger open fourth string and then hammering down uh, the second fret on the fifth string the chorus we've got another descending sequence of chords slightly different from in the verse this time we've got so we're starting off with I suppose this is uh, like an F triad really it's the third fret on the fifth string third fret on the fourth string second fret on the third string then to this shape here so a hammer on two open strings and then it continues as before so the A minor changing the bass note and then to the F so and at the end of the course it just hangs on that F major 7 a little bit longer I'm 
can't remember quite how long it is. It's maybe six bars of this. Again, with some slight variations on the finger picking pattern. Let me put all of that chorus part together then reasonably slowly. pretty much it. It just goes round again for another verse and chorus. There's a bit of a re-intro in the middle and then there's a final verse and chorus. And it kind of goes a little bit weird in the middle of the tune. It sounds to me like the guitar is doing one thing and then the strings are doing a slightly different thing. Take a listen to that and see if you can hear it. Not that it particularly matters. It all works beautifully but it's just a little bit hard to copy exactly what's going on. So this is the basics of the song. I encourage you to try variations of your own. As I say, there are little variations you can hear throughout the track. Uh, in particular on that F chord, I'm hearing occasionally these... ...little variations like that where you're just lifting up your first finger and putting it down again. Let me talk about the gear that I'm using today. Uh, no idea what Jackson Brown would have used on this recording. I uh, wonder if someone could ask him. He seems like quite a friendly guy. See if he remembers exactly what was used on this session. But it's a lovely sound. It's very warm. It's quite focused and dry. So I've just gone with my Telecaster. I'm on the middle position of the pickup selector. So both pickups are on. And amp-wise, I'm just going into my little Fender Super Champ. And I actually made a video all about this amp quite a while back. So for those of you who want more details on this amp, they can check that out and those of you who remember the very early days of this channel all of my early videos were made using that amp and since I've moved into this studio I've got a few more amp options so I've not used this super champ quite so much but it's always nice to plug into it. it always sounds good to me and I'm just going straight into the amp so no pedals or effects today <laughs> That's it for this video. I hope you enjoy learning to play this song and do try singing along if you'd like to. I know that today I played it instrumentally and I just wanted to focus on getting the guitar parts absolutely right and I'm not really well enough rehearsed to be able to sing and play it at the same time but that's probably something I'm going to work on. I think it'd be a nice tune to have in my repertoire. As usual, Tab is going to be up on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.